Hey, Heather. Hello. Uh, first question, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> um, I'm Heather. I play a lot of instruments in bands. I'm the bass player for Tiger Rider. I'm a music teacher. Um, I do some session work. I live in Seattle. That's pretty much what I do. <laughs> That's great. Well, thanks for being here today. Uh, I have plenty of questions to ask about you and Tiger Rider. Uh, but first, let's get an update on all the other stuff you do, because I know it's a lot. Um, when I first met you last year, I know you were playing bass in Evu. Mm -hmm. You were doing all your Tiger Rider stuff as a bassist and band manager. Uh, you were playing in a cover band, giving piano and bass lessons. Is all that still true with COVID or any changes there? Changes, yeah. Uh, it's all still true, but I teach lessons online now. Um, that's been kind of an adjustment. And I don't play in the cover bands right now. Um, just cause you know, there's no live shows right now, but hopefully at some point I'll get to do that again. <laughs> well, great. Well, Tiger Rider is your main project and I've been really impressed with, uh, kind of the work ethic you all have had for the last few months. Uh, once a week, every week for about five months, you guys, uh, recorded fully produced audio and video of some of your favorite cover songs. Um, yeah, you were doing the Beatles, Kurt Vile, Radiohead. Fleetwood Mac, I saw Gorillaz, that one was really cool. Tom Petty, Cheryl Crow, lots of others. Uh, tell me about putting together this series you did. This series started, we just wanted to do a Beatles cover because we had joined a Beatles cover group on Facebook. Um, so we thought it'd be fun to do Lady Madonna. And uh, we got way too into it, as we tend to do. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden we had tons of instruments, harmonies, um, all sorts of stuff. So we made a big video out of it and then just decided to do that every week. And we do that in our basement. We have um, Patrick, our drummer, has built like a recording studio down there. So we've just been learning how to make live videos. I feel like every week they've gotten a little better um, just because we've been learning things like <laughs> lighting or um, editing or, you know, stuff like that. But Patrick really drives that ship and kind of just became producer from day one on that. The editing, editing definitely got more intense as the videos went along. And some of those <laughs> early ones, uh, you would see like this single take all throughout the song. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to be more impressed if that's all real. Is what we're seeing on video the actual like audio take from the video clip? Or is any of that being mimed to pre-recorded audio because there are a couple times I saw maybe a little headphones but sometimes I couldn't tell if you were listening yeah. back to anything or not yeah we we have headphones on the whole time because we are um just doing it right along with the original track um it just helps so that we don't have to like learn it <laughs> right you know um singing along with somebody is so much easier um but yeah the audio on those tracks is the audio from the take that we're doing um although on a few of them for example, the bass take on the Wolfpack song and on Radiohead, I had to try a couple times. <laughs> so you're like splicing together a couple different versions? or Not just... splicing, but we would do the full take because um, we don't want to make it hard for editing. Right. So we would just, if that take wasn't something I was happy with, we would just, okay, do it again, like start film. So the film and the audio line up just the whole time. So the audio and video is mm. live. Wow. Well, that's really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, most of the covers you guys did are kind of in different styles than kind of the alternative rock sound uh, you guys have in Tiger Rider. Uh, the Sheryl Crow video, you played every instrument on, which was very cool. And you commented on that cover saying, uh, I've been obsessed with singer-songwriters ever since I can remember, and Sheryl Crow has always been at the top of that list. Her songwriting, production, musical ability, and charisma has had a huge impact on why I have chosen to become a musician. In elementary school, I would even cover my books and binders with pictures of her, Alison Krauss, Jewel, and others. Um, are you interested in pursuing more of that kind of Americana acoustic flavor that those artists write in? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's always been a dream of mine. Um, I, I feel like I like to be in groups more than on my own. Mm -hmm. So I have never really pursued a solo acoustic Americana kind of thing. Um, that's all I play on my guitar at home by myself. Um, but no, I love being in groups that take me in different musical styles than that. Should that happen? I would not complain. But it wouldn't be something that you're like the leader behind because in Tiger Rider, Nick writes most of the songs and you mm -hmm. guys kind of add to his skeletons. Mm -hmm. 
cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I will, but I feel like I'm too busy at this point, and I like to just play in my room. <laughs> right. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Uh, let's go back a little further. Uh, your sister, Brooke, is an accomplished musician, too. Uh, tell me about your guys' upbringing with music. Uh, like, what drew you guys in? Did your parents play? How early did you start? Were you guys competitive with each other? <laughs> um... Yes, in a healthy way, I guess. <laughs> no, we've always been, uh, we've played music together just since day one. Um, it's pretty awesome that we've had each other and been in, we're within two years of each other. So we were always harmonizing and playing the opposite things. I played guitar my whole life, so she played bass. Um, and she would sing lead and I would sing harmonies. Uh, so we always kind of worked to complement each other and not like play the same thing or want to do the same thing. Um, yeah, there's some cute videos of you guys both sitting at a piano together doing like the treble and bass parts. Yeah. <laughs> Those are super fun. Yeah. I feel very lucky to have a, a musical sister like that. And our parents do play, not professionally, and they're not in the industry or anything. But um, my dad's a singer. He plays guitar, and my mom plays piano. So we had it around growing up. And you just kind of, did, did they encourage that for you guys to start playing or the instruments were just around and you kind of naturally gravitated to it? They encouraged classical piano. Um, I was in classical piano lessons ever since I was six, I think. Um, but I really wanted to be a singer songwriter and <laughs> play acoustic guitar um, and write songs. So that was the deal that I would learn to play guitar uh, from my dad if I practiced piano. So they did push it in a certain sense. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, well, the quarantine cover video series we just talked about, you guys stopped that after 20 episodes so you guys can focus on the new uh, Tiger Rider album. Uh, do you have any news to share about upcoming music? Just today I saw you guys tease uh, a synth pop kind of project collaboration you're doing with another artist. Like, t tell me about that and what other new music uh, you guys have on the horizon. We have a lot in the works. Um, yes, a band or a musician named User in Seattle, he asked us to collaborate on one of his songs. We're just going to make a live band version of one of his electronic songs. Um, so we're really excited about that. Uh, Patrick and I have started an electronic project together. It's called Slender Dan. Uh, nothing is out yet, but that's also in the works. Um, and then this Tiger Rider album, it's turning a lot more electronic it's not an electronic album but there's more um like radiohead influence and bon Iver and things like that so we've really been dipping into more of those sounds lately and and how did that come about were you because i'm guessing you guys kind of had these songs written and rehearsing them as a three-piece did you kind of discover you were going this more electronic route in the recording of it where it happens to every band you get carried away with overdubs and you're like oh <laughs> let's focus on this kind of area this is fun possibly i think uh we've changed membership a little bit um and have just kind of shed that old sound for us a little bit and now we're just moving i just feel like we're developing and finding kind of our own sound for this next album and i'm sure an album after that will sound different. So yeah. natural progression. <laughs> yeah. Do you mind if I ask about kind of that membership thing? Cause you guys started originally as a, a four piece band and I, I don't need to know the drama, but at some point a guitarist leaves if mm -hmm. there wasn't, maybe there wasn't. And you decided uh, to just stay a three piece uh, instead yeah. of getting another person. I imagine that I just, from a sound perspective, you're kind of and Nick's already singing while playing guitar. So mm -hmm. to lose another melody instrument, I'm sure forced you guys to kind of reimagine the songs you already had and reimagine how you write and work together. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, why is say a three piece instead of go back to four? We, uh, you know, we still had one show booked, um, that we didn't want to back out of or anything. And so we just decided to play it as a three piece. It was at sunset tavern and we realized at that show, oh, we got this. Like, we can do this. Nick is talented enough to where he can, you know, add more stuff in on guitar. Um, I've beefed up my bass lines a little bit. And Patrick has added some, like, subtle synthesizer parts into um, the pad that we play along with. Mm. So we do have 
it's not that they're full on backing tracks, but we do have synthesizer parts running um, now in our live show, uh, which is not something that we had done before. So we, I guess you could call that our fourth bandmate at this point. But yeah, we have found that we work really well together and don't need to find another guitar player. And it's definitely easier. I know. I guess like even just little <laughs> things like scheduling band practices or creative decisions. Every band is going to have some disagreement. So if you only need to convince maybe one or two other people instead of three, yeah, yeah. that helps. Yep, three people is so much easier than four. <laughs> yeah, all of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure at some point someone, if there's a disagreement between two people, that third person is kind of like, oh God, which side do I? <laughs> yeah yeah support here definitely <laughs> yeah band politics um yeah i'm sure you guys have a lot of discussions now as you're kind of preparing all, all the new music mm -hmm. uh i'm curious what are your goals with the upcoming album if if you release it while we're dealing with covid you obviously won't be able to tour behind it as i'm sure you'd like to do and there's probably yeah. other promotional things that get complicated um so what are some of the professional goals with the next release obviously everyone wants to reach new audiences are there things you really want to do and prove with new music? I think we really want to um, be flexible and realize that this looks so much different than it ever has. Um, we have wanted to experiment with more of the song by song model anyway. It's going to be a full album of full work, but um, releasing things in single format is not really something that we have done in the past. Um, but this year has really given us the time to slow down and plan, you know, do we want videos? Do we want um, more synthesizers here? Do we want, we've brought in a bunch of people in the scene to sing on the album. Um, we've brought in a trumpet player, like cool things like this that we're just, we've just been forced to stop and be like, you know, take this year to really work on this album instead of like, get it out by summer, you know? Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I just had a follow-up to that, and it's blanking me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it will come back to me, and I'll remember. Um, oh, I'm so disappointed. I'm you said something, and I don't remember. <laughs> Hopefully, it will come back. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, those are all kind of cool goals to have, and hopefully, you can get behind that. Mm -hmm. That's throwing me off so much, I don't remember what I was going to say. Uh, but yeah, let, let's talk about some, when, when you kind of hit those kind of milestones and goals that you want to hit because you've done lots of cool stuff uh like with ibu you got the chance to tour europe uh, which i'm sure was a bucket list musician goal for you that's yeah. super cool <laughs> you got to play on kxp last year and i remember uh you somewhere i maybe on instagram said i've devoured kxp live videos since high school and recently got to play one i can't believe this is real i can officially die happy yeah <laughs> uh, I, I want you to think backwards through some of those milestones you've hit from the start of the band and kind of talk about what they mean to you were there certain milestones where you realize this is the moment that kind of led other doors to open up for us um with tiger rider or with a anything and you do so um, many things it's <sighs> a pretty big question yeah i think uh maybe this is more of a personal milestone, but about two years ago, just deciding, oh, you know, get into the scene. Don't stay back and do your own project only. Um, that's really been a turning point for me. I've decided to, as much as I can, say yes to collaborating. Like I'm currently working on three or four people's albums. Um, just you're doing like the session work or you feel like you're yeah. a full oh, creative no. collaborator? doing the session work. Um, but still it's so fun to like know that I'm just being intertwined with musicians in this scene. Um, and I think that has opened a lot of doors for Tiger Rider and myself personally. Um, and just saying yes to opportunities. The way that I got on that Ibu Europe tour is because Ibu asked me to play a U.S. tour with, I think, three weeks notice. Um, <laughs> you know, and I was just like, can I do this? yes you know and made it happen and then that opened so many doors for me as well um so yeah just trying really hard to like personally get out there and collaborate has been so much fun and so important for my career 
I remember what I was going to ask earlier. That was so distraught. I couldn't remember. <laughs> uh, you, you were talking about how like you, you have some video ideas, music uh -huh. video ideas and kind of drop in single by single throughout. Um, yeah, I'm curious. I, I know you manage the band. Have you thought about kind of how you want to, what where you want to take people first? Because for some people, it's we want to drive all of our listeners to Spotify. To some people, it's Bandcamp. Yeah. And with music videos, that kind of leads to YouTube, which you've obviously been doing a lot with, uh, yeah. with the quarantine videos. Do you find one kind of form of engagement to be more important than the others? Um, I'm sure this is the wrong answer, <laughs> but I guess we find Spotify to be the most important to us. Um, is that because that's where the most listener listeners are or, or what about it? Yeah, well, I guess music streaming would be the most important because we want, ideally, the album would be listened to, you know, in album format um, or single by single. Uh, so just in the listening environment, I think, is where um, we place the most importance. Um, and I guess Spotify is just the most famous uh, music streaming platform. Although, I don't know, the more we've been creating videos, the more we've never been a very music video pushing band. Um, we have a few, but they haven't been the biggest part of what we do. So who knows? Maybe we will be more into YouTube this upcoming year. Well, what you were saying earlier, I think before we started filming, is that the, the music videos you've done have been pretty passive things, almost like an afterthought, like we will do this real quick, knock it out in an afternoon. And now it seems you're more inspired by like, you can be creative in more ways than just music. You can yeah. really give artistic statements, um, yeah, through videos and you were telling me about some of the cool ideas you have and that you're like excited to chase. It's not just, Oh, we should do a video. So let's film something in our backyard. There's intention behind it. Yeah. Now. So, and, and you've been creative a bunch of different ways. There's videos and also like with <laughs> merchandise, you've done fun little things, different t-shirt designs and lighters and other things. Mm -hmm. But is there another kind of way to be creative separate than music that excites you more? Or uh, album covers, poster designs. There's so many different huh. things. Yeah. There's so many things besides music that go into a band for sure. <laughs> um, I do. I guess. Yeah. I love making the videos. That's super fun. I don't. I wish that I loved making the website and running the social media and making the shirts more. But that's just kind of like part of the business, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um I, I don't dislike running the social media, but it's just not something I think about all the time. That's an active effort, you know, but making the videos is very easy to get absorbed in. Um, it's such a fun project. Yeah. So that's probably my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, we'll get into show and tell before too long here, but before we do that, I kind of, I have a few brief kind of sillier, lighter questions. Okay. Um, this is me trying to be like Nardwar. I don't know if you ever watch his videos. Uh -uh. He's this awesome canadian interviewer who will do the deepest deepest dive research and <laughs> dance and kind of ask them something and the in the the interviewee will be like how do you know that like that's crazy so i've tried to do my version of that oh my god yes <laughs> um so the, the first one um yeah taco bell why is it important to your band we used to go to taco bell after every show because it was the only place open um, but we don't live by a Taco Bell anymore. And so that tradition has ended. However, Taco Bell is still near and dear to our hearts. Yeah. <laughs> How long was this a band tradition for you guys? Um, as long as we lived at that old house. So probably three and a half years, I would say. And at, I, I know you guys currently all live together. Were you all at an old house together before too? Mm -hmm. It was me, Nick, and then our old guitar player, Patrick. Mm -hmm. We lived in West Seattle. Um, and then a year and a half ago, me, Nick, and our drummer, Patrick, moved into a house in Renton. Nice. With no Taco Bell nearby. <laughs> well, hopefully if there's a, when shows happen again, after you play a show, there'll be a Taco Bell. <sighs> they better. We've got, we've done enough shout outs. I feel like they should open one in Renton. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll try to make it happen. <laughs> All right. Uh, second weird, silly question. I'm just going to give these to you and see kind of if you have what it takes. You, you know what to do with these? Oh, my God. <laughs> can can you actually juggle? I don't know if I can do this right here. Let me see. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that mic out of the way. 
I got it. It's hard sitting down. Yeah, do you, do you want to stand up here? I used to be able to do this. I'll take that. My microphone down. Here we go. Don't die. Ah. No adjust is needed. How did you know that I know how to juggle? I, I have resources. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Let last one little silly thing like that. Uh, can you continue after me? Z Y X W V U T S R P Q S R Q P O N M L K J I H G F E D C B A. You, you caught yourself on that PQ thing. You, yeah, you got it right. Yeah. Well done. Oh my god, <laughs> those are great questions. Yes. Uh, well, now let's get to. Uh, you brought a show and tell item. <laughs> I did. I brought. This is. Um, oh, that's so tiny. Let me zoom in here. A little. This is a good spot to hold it at. That's perfect. Okay. This is. I can't read what it says. It's a little reflective. Oh, there it is. Carol K. Oh, it says whoa. Carol K. Okay. It's a Carol K. Base pick. Um, Patrick and Nick, or just Patrick, I can't remember, my bandmates, got this for me for Christmas or my birthday, um, because they know that I'm very inspired by her. Um, she's... Now, remind me everything. She's, like, the badass session musician. I know she played in, like, yeah. Beach Boys albums and, like, yeah. or... Was she part of the Wrecking Crew, or is that a separate thing? She was part of the Wrecking Crew, yeah. She wrote... A lot of the bass lines on Beach Boys albums, Mission Impossible theme song, um, so many famous recognizable bass lines. Yeah, she's such a badass. <laughs> so what, what's the story with this pick? How'd they get this? Um, I think on eBay. I have no idea. And this um, is like something she uses. Does she use picks with her name on them or it's just like it's part of her <laughs> online store? I, I, I don't I, know what you know about it, but I'm curious. I am going to choose to believe that she has used this one. <laughs> Oh, that's, I don't know if you know this. That's the pick she used to record the bass for Wouldn't It Be Nice. <laughs> exactly. It, yeah, that's a very important pick you have there. Because, like, who's going to prove me wrong, you know? Right. Um, but <laughs> I think it's just the style of pick she uses, and it has her name on it. I was wondering that, too, on the way over here. Like, who uses a pick with their own name on it? I guess I would if somebody gave me a pick with my name on it. I know one. I, I saw Albert Hammond Jr. from The Strokes. Mm -hmm. uh, he's done a couple of solo shows I've been to, and then he throws out picks with his initials on them, and I, I have a couple of them. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's normal. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think if I've seen it, other people do that. Yeah. I, I've seen picks get thrown mm -hmm. up. I don't think they have their name on it generally. Yeah. But that's a super styling pick with the kind of glossy, like gold letters on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Gold do you mind that one more it's time? like long and pointy. I don't think this would be my That's choice it. of pick, honestly. It, it looks a little small, or it's definitely like a sharper kind of... Uh... It's very sharp. I don't like that, but, you know, I'm not going to not gonna throw shade on Carol's choices. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it, yeah, I, I like medium picks. I'm Bass, I'm guessing you like a little heavier? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think on a bass I would use like a one mil or heavier guitar but 0.73 and lower yeah for sure and then yeah. um i know i it's the weirdest thing where i don't know why but yellow dunlops like I yellow dunlop those. mediums are my pick <laughs> i only want to be seen on stage like with a yellow <laughs> dunlop medium like the tortex from, one yeah the tortex ones they're and, the best <laughs> and then i've since discovered that father john misty like all of his like every time you look at him playing that's like the pick he's using oh. so i feel validated that someone else has decided the same color and he probably and saw you and... using them it's very possible i was like wow if that guy's gonna do it then i'm gonna do it we, we go way back <laughs> <laughs> yep. well thank you so much for uh show and tell today i want to give the last word to you if you have any uh like shout outs or other things you want to give um uh, pl plugs Shout out's a weird word. No one that every time I say that, people are like, on the sh on the spot. Who am I gonna shout out? Yeah, plug. Where can people listen to your music? Um, yeah, people can subscribe on your YouTube and Spotify. You can subscribe. Uh, yeah, you can subscribe. You can go to tigerwriterband.com. Um, all of our links are on there. Um, that's for Tiger Rider. We are playing Nectar Lounge, one of oh, their they, live streams, mm -hmm. um, late October. So stay. Stay tuned for that. Pretty excited. We've never actually played Nectar before. We've been trying to. And it's kind of funny that our first time will be in a COVID live stream. 
but um is this something you because you had been reaching out and wanting to do a show there did they reach out to you or you reached out to them to do this they reached out to us a couple days ago um i'm surprised that they did because i feel like we're not the genre that they normally have right um but hey it's covid i think one of our friends does sound there too so hopefully He'll be working sound that night. <laughs> oh, oh, so you're actually like going to the venue and they have a couple people running yeah. sound there. Mm-hmm. Socially distanced yeah. uh, kind of I think the High show. Dive is doing some of those too. I, I've seen a few videos so. of that. I that, That's great. I should look into doing that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, Heather, thank you so much for talking today. Thank you. <laughs> Later, everyone.